Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me, Umber Rays. Today we will be talking about some FFBE JP side news, including a banner that I missed more recently uh, featuring the new store units and uh, the current new banner that just started today. I actually made an information video yesterday about it, but uh, it didn't get uploaded because after the live stream, I was just a little too tired and I went to, I just decided to sleep last night. So that's okay, we'll cover everything today in a big, large, sweeping manner, but in a pretty quick way because I don't want to spend a massive amount of time. For anybody who's curious, uh, though, I should clarify maybe something that uh, some people are wondering about this banner, which is the War of the Visions crossover banner. It is a fast type banner, and also it is a limited type banner. The units may reappear in the future, blah, 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 blah. But uh, the thing to note about this is this is not JP's raid banner for the month. Uh, there will be another uh, event that we haven't gotten our raid event. This is to go along with an item world that is currently happening or just started on the JP side. But regardless, it is not the end of the month raid that is still coming up. So if you are saving and hoping for more Final Fantasy 12 characters, you may want to just hold on to your resources and not pull on either of these banners. But enough about that. Let's talk about these banners, starting with the one that I've clearly nego well okay let's go with the three banners first of all cafe charlotte as well as the elnoth banner i remember when uh, weapon units were supposedly going to be a thing and um then they kind of just disappeared because i guess they didn't make enough money maybe they should have just made it a fest unit and overpowered okay um but Regardless uh, about this banner, uh, these two units got enhancement recently on the JP side, and while not particularly bad, neither were overly exciting. Therefore, I think it's a pretty easy cast. Uh, just nothing really overly exciting there. Okay, now we get to talk about the story units. So these are this is the uh, mid-month story JP side units uh, featuring characters uh, Nareen as or sorry. No, not Swan. It's Nareen and Owl. Uh, some kind of... I want to say that it is... I'm not entirely familiar with the word Nareen, so I don't know if it has anything to do with, like, Black Swan or anything like that. But uh, either way, uh, they are the new fest or units here on the JP side, and are they any good? Well, uh, Nareen is basically a, damage, a big damage dealer, straight DPS, and so is kind of Owl as well. <clears throat> uh, Nareen here, who is on screen right now, her TMR is a 40% attack, a chance to ignore fatal damage, 20% uh, when HP is above 1%, increase attack 20% when equipped with a greatsword, and her super TMR is a greatsword as well. Uh, Two-handed, increase physical damage against aquatics and humans with some MP recovery. Now, <clears throat> Overall, my feeling about Noreen is that is pretty much summed up in her super TMR. She has, you know, two elements that are available to her. She has some debuffing capability. Uh, she has wind element and water element in her kit, and she can debuff for those elements as well. But overall, her kit is a lot of Stardust Ray chaining, and it is just damage, 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 increase attack, you know, increase modifiers, the stuff we've been seeing for a while. And it seems that she focuses on two particular killers, aquatics and humans. Humans, again, I, I feel like it will forever be valuable in terms of the Brave Exvius enemy design space. But with that being said, while overly specialized this unit, how overly specialized this unit is, nothing particularly excited about me about this unit's kit, just like, okay, it's a strong, it's a good DPS for sure. No problem if you got her, but would I break the bank for her? Probably not. And that might have to do with the fact that I feel like some more powerful units are very quickly going to show up in the future. And uh, here is Owl. And Owl is the uh, opposing five-star unit, a little bit easier to get, I do believe, because I do believe that this one is where I say it, let me double check, because it's really, 
actually, for anybody who's wondering about how hard it is to come back to the JP side and talk about all the JP stuff, it's really hard to keep track of what is a fest unit and what is not. Hey, there's Owl. It's also the 2017. And interesting. That must mean the 2000. Ah, forget it. 2020. Let's not go there. Anyway, uh, Owl's TMR is pretty darn nice, I gotta say. Oop, that's the Wood of Banner. So, anyway, about Owl. Uh, TMR is a 50% attack increase with 10% physical evasion. Pretty nice little combination there for, you know, a TMR. I mean, like, 10% physical evasion with attack. Good way to build an attacker that can, you know, just dodge past some enemy physical attacks. Uh, Super TMR is a Katana Butler Kane 184 attack with a passive to increase attack 40% and auto cast a excellent butler at the start of or um, on the start of battle or being revived for one turn a 250 percent attack increase and for one for the next turn uh two uh 300 for two turns can't be dispelled so overall i really think that the super tmr on owl is pretty cool uh because it is like a katana but it's also just got some really nice passives for attackers at the start of battle would I break the bank for it? Not overly, again. Like, oh, fire and wind is this guy's elements. Uh, again, just a, you know, DPS, Stardust Ray Chainer. Nothing bad here, but nothing overly exciting. And that's why I didn't review this banner particularly sooner, because while they're good DPSs, like, so long as it's on a fast banner, it's basically going to be a good DPS if it falls under that category. So now we get to talk about... The other thing, which is the world of stuff, which is the stuff I'm probably a little bit more excited just because, you know, I'm playing world of, I'm enjoying world of a fair bit. And so, yeah, taking a look at it, Mont is going to be a free character. So, so long as you're playing the game and doing, you know, the uh, item world and everything, you get a tickets. He's basically a free unit and you can get a TMR and super TMR out of it. And overall, unit basically looks like, you know, he looks correct from a votive perspective, and his kit seems correct from a votive perspective, and other than that, he's a free unit. Just don't complain about free stuff. <clears throat> TMR, uh, Prince of Fate, is a increased 20% HP and 40% attack and defense when equipped with a sword. Pretty nice little, to, like, I think that's a pretty good free TMR, to be totally honest. Uh, for the reason that 20% um, HP and 40% defense, if you get a lot of DPSs here on the JP side, you know, you want your spots open for killers or whatnot, but if you wanted something a little more defensive that still has some attack on it, eh, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, Super TMR Lion's Emblem is a HP 272, attack 23, defense 23, and spirit 23. Uh, accessory, and if you're wondering why the weird stats, that's it's just carbon copy from the Wotif side. It seems weird, but over there it makes sense. Anyway, active ability is Shout, increase limit burst 5 to all allies. So it actually has a, a limit burst boosting ability on it. Uh, again, for a free unit and a free TMR and a free super TMR for just playing the game, Seems really good, and that's kind of my overall impression of Monto. Uh, Monto is a just a pretty solid, solid tank. Uh, to be very clear, a physical based tank. He doesn't have anything magic. He has some break abilities for attack or magic. Uh, he has some uh, buffs to himself. He can do some stardust ray chaining with either earth or fire elements uh, and the big thing in his kit that uh, some people have noticed and uh, not been overly happy about is the fact that he has something called like his basically his <clears throat> how do I say this his cover ability his cover ability only lasts one turn now if you think now when you hear that at first you're probably like that's horrible obviously for a tank I want to cast something that will last for a long time. But 
There's a couple of things to really note about how good I think Mont is. For one thing, his Sentinel ability gives him a increase to defense and spirit of 200% for one turn, mitigate physical damage 25% for himself, mitigate magic damage 25% for himself, a chance to protect all, and then the protect all allies with mitigation to himself for one turn. What's the advantage of the one turn thing? Very clearly, the, the advantage of the one turn thing is that it is incredibly immune to dispel. Like, so long as you're casting this every turn, and you may say, well, Umbra, if I have to cast it every turn, then I'm not be being able to do anything else with him. Not true, because he has permanent W cast in his kit. So he can cast his Sentinel ability every turn and do something else. <clears throat> that, in a way, just makes Mont a really, really good just physical tank that also protects himself a little bit from magic damage. Uh, he has <clears throat> basically dispel immune cover. Uh, you don't have to worry about it because you're always going to be casting it. He does also have some uh, a cooldown ability on five turns to do a with a 50% mitigation of damage to himself for three turns as well as increasing fire and earth resistance 100% for himself and protecting everybody else in the party. That is kind of bigger thing that lasts multiple turns, but it's kind of, I like this. I really like Sentinel because it just goes, it eliminates that Dispel problem. Forget it being, you know, immune to Dispel. Here, it's just, you're just constantly recasting it. Uh, he also has some Human Killer in some of his Stardust Ray kits, as well as some Beast Killer in his kits. He has some Natural Chance to Provoke and all of that. Um, overall, I have to say that um, <clears throat> for new people who are playing the game, Mont is a really, really good, solid, powerful, physical-based tank. And um, to that, I, I gotta say, I actually, you know, like him as a free unit. Just another in a long line of free unit, good free units. Uh, continuing on, now we get to talk about the Paid Banner. Now, Gilgamesh is a character I never talked about before, but Gilgamesh has a really good TMR, super TMR, and also uh, he is just a solid kit unit on the JP side from what I've heard, so that's a good thing on this banner. But taking a look at Ketone as well as Stern, both Ketone and Stern are Again, DPS units on a fast banner, so the rule is, are these units going to break the DPS mold? No. Uh, the boss rush character that uh, was recently introduced to the JP side, that did, and so did Dark Bahamut, or Bahamut Dark Fina. It's a tongue twister. But while both of those characters have, you know, r really blown past the damage limit, None of these characters are going to exactly set the world on fire, and neither is their TMRs or super TMRs. So looking at Ketone, her TMR is an accessory, 142 HP, 43 attack, and 26 defense, with a increased physical evasion of 20%. Again, for a physical evasion item, I, and that's one that's just a TMR, seems really nice. 20% evasion is pretty good if people are looking to build those evade units. Super TMR is a Materia, 70% attack, increase attack 25% with dual wielding, and increase lightning resistance 60%. Nothing overly impressive in that Super TMR, but that being said, <clears throat> uh, maybe that's not what you're hoping to get out of her. Uh, certainly not what I would be. I, she has basically fire and earth in her kit. She can debuff elements for... 100 or 120 uh, percent. She has stacking damage. Her damage types are uh, absolute mirror of equity as well as stardust ray chaining. She has double cast in her kit naturally and she has ways to increase her attack or limit burst all of that good stuff and do dish out physical damage. So she's a physical DPS. She has some decreased chance of being targeted and whatnot and she has the dual wheel chain cap increase. Overall, I think uh, she can dish out some pretty good damage and um, just to show it off, because why not? I got the stamina. Let's go in here. Supper is ready while I'm filming, so I know that this video has already gone on too long. Let's take a look at Kiton's limit burst here and how much damage it dishes out. 
with a fairly moderate build. Doesn't look anywhere near as pretty as it does in Wotav, but we're not going to hold it against that. Or hold it against her. Uh, she also has, let's take a look in her kit and see if she has any AoE damage. Now here is one of her cooldowns that debuffs the enemy for her elements. That's pretty nice, and we'll just get Cloud and Sarah here to do their thing. But overall, uh, Ketone, again, someone that I particularly like and like the ninjas, because Yuffie is like one of my favorites from FS7, I'm at least interested in trying on a passive <laughs> kind of attempt. Am I going to break the bank? Nope. But, um, oh yeah, she also has Demon and Human Killer, which, that's, I prefer that over Noreen's Aquatic and uh, Human Killer, because Demon's, again, probably going to pop up more than a few times. And now the other character to talk about is Stern, who is the other new character, so let's get him in here. Alright, and let's talk about his kit. So Stern has a TMR Fate of the Prince, a increased 50% attack materia with a 50% attack when single wielding a weapon. So basically, a little bit of normal attack, a little bit of true dual wield. Okay, alright, fine, good enough. Lion's Armor is a super TMR, which is a light armor, 434 HP, 38 attack, 38 defense, Wall of Field, increase limit burst damage 50%, increase dark resistance 50%. The increased limit damage, limit burst damage, okay, all right, now we're a little bit more interesting because um, the increase in limit burst damage is valuable to say the least, especially with a attack armor that is a light armor. It should be pretty well able to be equipped by a lot of the big DPSs and just the better deal that you can get with getting more limit burst damage. Okay. Again, worth breaking the bank? Probably not. Now, other than that, uh, his kit has ice and dark imbuing. He is absolute mirror of equity. Uh, across the board on all of his damages, he can increase his attack on his cooldown for 300% turn. He's basically a true dual wield unit, and he has damage up against humans. And... Yeah, basically just human. So he'll be incredibly good against human enemies, and he can unlock triple cast uh, through methods. He can also debuff his elements for 120%. There isn't anything in either of these units' kits that really makes me hard recommend these units. They're good. They can dish out a good amount of damage. They have kits that are capable of, you know, being really strong DPS units. But... Are they anything exciting? Probably not. Again, I haven't seen any particular numbers, but um, yeah, he's dishing out damage. There you go. So let's do the limit burst one more time. Now, to end this video, I'm going to be doing a pull on the banner because yeah, I got some lapis saved up. There's probably there's still more lapis before the end of the month. I'm not pulling on FF12. Next month, I am assuming that there will be something Final Fantasy VII related. What that will be, who knows, could finally be the start of the CG villain set that I've been predicting for a very, very long time. It would be nice to get that right. But anyway, let's do a poll on this banner just for fun, just for video prosper prosperity, and uh, yeah. I look forward to getting nothing out of it. <laughs> Off to a good start. Yeah, that looks basically about right. So, you know, the rates in Brave Exvius still suck. <laughs> anyway, you guys, so uh, let me know what you think of this banner. Are you going to be pulling on it? Or are you just going to skip it? Either way, Fremont should not be passed up. And, um... I'll see you tomorrow for a Wotiv video, where I'll be talking about the new content in Wotiv, uh, and we'll see how good that is. Anyway, take care, thanks for watching.